What made the popular guy slash girl lose their popularity? A popular boy cried in class during a discussion about a recent tragedy because someone that was close to him died in said tragedy. He got relentlessly bullied for the short time afterward that he was at that school. He was a good kid that didn't deserve any of that. I really hate middle school kids sometimes. Aw, that's actually so sad. Popular girl was driving drunk on the way to school and caused a pretty bad accident involving three other cars. She spilled liquor on herself and slammed on her brakes in a line of cars. Her car managed not to have a scratch. She swapped seats with her passenger in front of everyone, before cops arrive. A few minutes later, we realize she has disappeared. She had slipped into another car that had stopped to see if everyone was okay. Several people ended up getting tickets and her passenger ended up getting a DUI. She was unpopular until graduation. Who the hell agrees to swap seats with someone after they've caused an accident while drunk? That's just a series of misfortune waiting to happen. Her not as popular and not as drunk friend. From what I remember, she was a year or two younger. That's some serious social hierarchy crap. Kid made a video for a school project, which he played in front of the class, project video ended and cut to him beating his meat. He was a freshman, he spent the remainder of HS known only as the cameraman. Was this on purpose or like an accidental film cut? No. From his reaction, I'm guessing it was purely accidental. The consensus was that he used an old tape and didn't check what was on it. This was early 90s. She got pregnant and had to quit cheerleading. The football players didn't want her anymore and her popularity took a hit. Plus the other girls were very judgmental. Did I just read the Glee plot line? No in Glee, no one ever suffered long-term consequences for their mistakes. This senior got suspended cause he effed a freshman in the parking lot. Sounds like he wasn't trying hard to not get caught. He would waste it all to have a summer that he could call a memory that's full of fun? We had two or three over the four years get pregnant. They no longer went to all the parties with a kid to look after. Two or three? We had 46 girls walk across the stage pregnant at my graduation. There was a daycare practically attached to the high school so students could go to school after having kids and just drop their kid off there during the day. One girl I know got her tubes tied at 22 after her fifth kid. Hold up what the F. Small town Texas. Everyone just has babies because there isn't anything better to do. I joke that I should have gotten an extra cord at graduation for graduating without a child. Same, I went to school in Texas, don't live there anymore, and lack of good sex education led to 89 pregnant girls in my high school before I graduated. Some of them literally didn't know how they got pregnant and I remember one had to be told that what she'd done with the boy was sex. She didn't know. Not to generalize but Catholic Latina girls seem to receive even less sexual education at home and made up most of the pregnant girls. It's why they have to be able to get that info at school. Yeah, two or three are rookie numbers. There were 90 girls in my class, and on graduation day, 30 of them were either pregnant or had a kid or two already. Good on them for finishing high school though, honestly. It's hard to do as a teen mom. Edit, the class thing is clearly confusing to some. I used it interchangeably with grade. 90 girls in my grade, aka graduating class. We also had 60 boys. This one popular girl in HS got so drunk at a party that she just started crafting herself everywhere. Some friends drove her home and she did it again in the back seat. Not easily forgotten. But it was one of those things no one would say anything about it's just that the entire school knew by Monday afternoon. Musical notes, Crapton in the back seat Crapton in the front seat got to make my mind up, which seat can I take, musical notes. What a party pooper edit, I love all you poop heads who gave this an obscene amount of awards. You've now made it clear to me what that phrase originally meant. That's a school changing event. I went to the same school as the kids of the prime minister of my country at the time. I didn't know the daughter too well but apparently, she went from being popular to being bullied out of the school when her dad lost the election. 
It was pretty sad that people starting hating on her for something she had no control over. When the kid of the leader of the goddamn country is in the school, opportunist dickheads try to suck up to them, when the name no longer has meaning, they leave them in the ditch. It's a sad cycle. Short-sighted move from those dickheads. Former prime ministers tend to stay well-connected and fairly powerful. Not to mention that former leaders' kids tend to become leaders themselves, for example Justin Trudeau. George W. Bush and Jeb. Bush. Saretsi, Ian. Several Gandhi family members. Edit, yes, I'm well aware they're not related to the Gandhi and are actually descended from Nehru but it's still the name they use after the change from Gandhi. Uhuru Kenyatta. Saad Hariri. Joseph Kabila. Benazir Bhutto. Edit, also, the Kennedys. Mitt Romney. Gloria Arroyo. Benigno Aquino 3. And for my first ordinance, I will increase taxation by 15%, for Ted Smith and him alone. You know who you are, you vagina, and you should have paid me back for that lunch I bought you when you forgot yours. Throwing crap in the hall on people's lockers. He threw actual crap? Why? And how? He crap on a paper towel in the bathroom and threw it into the hall. Not sure why, he was a troublemaker and probably on drugs and mentally ill. My cousin crap on a paper towel and left it on the gym teacher's desk because he was being an extreme pervert. That actually made him popular though, he just wasn't liked because he was a dick. Word got out that this kid stole from his grandparents for drug money. In my old school, that basically translated to has money, has drugs, can probably get more. Oh crap it's you again. From everything I've pieced together from this thread, it seems like you went to a really terrible school. I'm sort of laughing over here, it sounds like Grover meeting Michael Myers. Oh, crap, it's you again. He's the monster at the end of this thread. Becoming the small fish at university. Nothing humbles you like going from a school with a class size of 300 to a university with 30,000 students. Freshman year of high school. Very popular guy who was the it kid freshman Phenom wide receiver on a nationally ranked team. We were all leaving class one day. He randomly decided it was a good idea to make fun of a very well-loved handicapped guy who was dying of his condition, some advanced form of water on the brain if I remember correctly, and even decided to punch him. This knocked the poor kid to the ground. About 10 guys immediately jumped him. A shop teacher saw it, the wide receiver getting his, happen and let it continue for a minute before stopping things. Mr. Popular got quite messed up in that short window. Kicked off team. Expelled. Moved schools in a move that I'm guessing was a way to start over at a new school? Never heard from him again. Went from pep rally king to degenerate outcast in 5 minutes. I had a front row seat and was one of 50 plus, who testified to the school admins. The victim passed away later that school year from his condition. You almost never heard him speak, but when he did he was always kind and thoughtful. That's just sad. Humans are so weird. In a good way, I mean. Think about how everyone knows his situation. No one would bring it up but everyone knew and there is a sort of silent social pact to treat him really well. That social ability to understand that communally is so strong that all those kids jumped him without a word of warning. How crazy is that? A short life is always tragic but imagine getting to watch people jump to defend you. He got to experience teenagers doing something beautiful as a group to stand up for him. That is a very rare story. I bet he felt very loved. Making fun of somebody's dad when they were diagnosed with cancer, that's going to drop your approval rating somewhat. You and I went to very, very different schools. I can't tell if this means your school would never do that or your school is pro-cancer. My school was pro-F you. My school was F everyone but you. My school was F your education, where's our money bitch? Her mom came to a school meeting and told everyone she suffers from mild autism. Damn that's pretty effed, hope she's okay. He was a new kid but due to his looks, 
parents' wealth, and sports aptitude he quickly became popular. Then he made the mistake of bullying a harmless kid who was on the spectrum and was basically the football team's lucky charm. They did not take kindly to that and he went from being the next big thing to being the kid no one wanted to talk to and he had to basically bribe people to keep them around. I want to say we went to the same school because this exact same situation happened at mine. Someone came in to play football and decided to make fun of the kid who you could tell was on the spectrum. Everyone decided to make his life a living hell during practice after that. The kid was the nicest person I've ever met. He may not be able to function like other people his age, but he'd help out in any way he could from charity events to work that needed to be done at games when I was there. We gave him a jersey, as he was an honorary member of the team from the day he wanted to join. That football team sounds like they're amazing people, seeing people band together and stick up for the person who may or may not be able to do so for themselves always makes me happy. I also just like seeing rich people being put in their place according to personality. They weren't all saints but they treated him really well, especially because it turned out he was really good at tutoring and he kept a lot of them from being benched over bad grades. I actually remembered what caused the new kid to try and bully him too. The lucky charm kid was big on hugging, basically, how he'd always greet his friends on the football team, and even the cheerleaders got in on it. He tried to hug the new kid who hadn't gotten the memo and rather than calmly telling the lucky charm kid no he got mean about it, there were several homophobic slurs and expletives. You get the picture. So yeah, it didn't end well for the new kid. There is something heartwarming yet hilarious about a kid with diagnosable autism being the one to tutor the football team. That image gives me the belly chuckles. Kids on the spectrum are often very smart, they just have trouble communicating that to others. So the fact that they got to learn academics from him while he practiced interpersonal abilities with them is super wholesome. He wrote a really amazing letter about his time in high school that was on the front page of the school newspaper the last week of his senior year, he was a year ahead of me. I wish I still had a copy of it. He highlighted things about himself that if you met him you wouldn't have thought he realized but just showed how intelligent he was under the personality quirks and neurodivergence he had. Sports teams can be really cliquey, but sometimes that's a good thing. If they decide everyone's in it with us or adopt geeky slash lone air slash outsiders as part of the clique, they've got your back. They lost their place to a kind and warm-hearted sweet girl with a very sunny and positive vibe. Suddenly everyone was around her and not around the popular kid slash bully. Basically, the students finally saw what they really needed. That's kind of always been sort of the case at our school thank God. Everyone adores her good vibes. I was the popular girl. Developed full-blown schizophrenia my sophomore year of high school and had a spiral that rivaled a Hollywood movie. By the time I graduated, everyone knew me as the weird, crazy witch girl who talked to herself and had no friends. Now I'm out of high school, stable, on my meds, with people in my life who love me, and I haven't thought about popularity since. Life is wild. I am happy and proud of you for getting better. Congrats. I wish you the very best in the future. Mental health matters. I'm so happy for you. Schizophrenia is such a struggle and you're amazing for sticking with that fight. A guy was bragging for like a solid week about how he slept with like three girls at the school. Turns out two of them got pregnant. That was really bad luck. But that wasn't what made him unpopular, what made him unpopular was that one of the pregnant girls was known as the innocent religious girl and genuinely wanted to wait until marriage before having sex. Her friends started questioning why she changed her standards so suddenly. Turns out she was raped. What happened to the young lady? If you don't mind me asking. I don't know since that whole debacle happened like two months prior to me moving to a different state. I knew her a little bit and she seemed like the kind of person to deliver the child. I wasn't close enough to her to have any idea whether her parents would approve of her delivering, or even keeping the baby. I hope she's doing well. Yeah I hope she's doing okay and I hope the guy rots in hell. Please tell me this dude was punished, for the love of god I cannot handle another story of a bastard getting away with rape slash sexual assault. I know he was taken to court but I don't think there was enough evidence to convict him. After I moved out of there, about two months after the crap went down, I was in the dark about the drama around it. 
I did get a text from a friend that I stayed in touch with and she said he allegedly got raped by one of the guys on the wrestling team multiple times and all the teachers hated his gut so he never caught a break academically. Also he's probably not getting into college after that crap so at least there's that. He should be facing jail time but the girl he got pregnant refused to testify in court I think, maybe she was ashamed I don't know. It was confirmed though that she was raped because she got a rape kit done at around the same time she got pregnant. WTF. The guy who raped the two girls was then raped himself. He made fun of some girl's dead father, drug overdose. The other popular kids confronted him about how effed up that was and he lost all of his popularity. I love how it's like there was some popular kid council that revoked his membership. The council will decide your fate. She was raped, and became incredibly withdrawn. Instead of getting her help, or alerting the adults, everyone just sort of dropped her. Not being a cool kid, I learned about what actually happened years later, unfortunately. Poor girl. Similar, she was a nice girl. She wasn't the smartest but she was somewhat pretty. Two guys drugged and raped her. The guys didn't get any punishment and they are still popular. The girl lost some of her popularity but she had some friends. We didn't talk a lot before, we had a few interactions here and there. The sheer amount of popular girl got raped comments on this thread makes so effing angry. This was an elementary school. She peed her pants at recess. Then her mom came to the school with a change of clothes but was livid about the accident. Gave her a very loud spanking in the bathroom which everyone heard. Then made her wear a diaper. I guess she wet the bed pretty often. I'm pretty sure her mom was intentionally humiliating her as a messed up punishment. This was in the 80s in rural Alabama. Things were and still are different there. Ironically the mom was probably the root of the issue or at the very least exacerbating it. Pants slash bed wetting in elementary kids when they should be well past the age of potty training is often a symptom of several disorders. It could also very well be a health issue that she needed to see a neurologist for. This was what I thought. Poor girl, hope she is fine. Yeah I know. I have a daughter of my own now with some bedwetting issues. I can't imagine doing that to her. It would only set her back worse. I had bedwetting issues for a while and boy would this have made it worse. Thankfully, my parents were pretty cool about it and helped me try to get over it. Eventually had to get medication for it. Super glad my parents weren't like hers. Every doctor and professional we talked about my daughter's bedwetting has told us to act as if it's not a big deal and just be supportive. She didn't need medication. Therapy helped actual because of what caused it. It could also be a sign of sexual abuse. I hope she turned out all right. I couldn't imagine beating a child, especially in those circumstances. Edit, I feel like I should correct my wording. This is not by itself an automatic sign of sexual or physical abuse. The cause for such behavior could have numerous sources and I apologize if what I posted was misleading to anyone. If anyone is curious about age regression, here's an interesting article I found. Web link. That's horrible. Honestly if this was presented to me now, I would immediately flag it for potential child abuse slash sexual abuse. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to be the first to know about Red Rabbit Reader's new videos. If you like our videos, please like them on YouTube and share them with your friends. We welcome your comments below. Press to start another of our videos.